New England Fishing is brought to you by those who live like a pro. With GMC Sierra Denali, we are professional grade. And brought to you by Garmin, we'll take you there. Pursuit Boats, explore life in a pursuit. Your New England Yamaha Outboard Dealer. Reliability starts here. And by Bosun's Marine, we share your passion. I know a special place, a certain corner of the country where the fishing is pretty good. A place with deep lakes and surf-pounded beaches, marsh-lined estuaries and lazy forest streams, roaring ocean rips and small secluded ponds. A place called New England. I'm Tom Richardson. Join me as we explore the region's diverse fishing destinations, chase its many species, and forge new fishing adventures on New England Fishing. For most people, Essex, Massachusetts is simply a quaint seaside town north of Boston. A place to delight in some of the area's famous fried clams and perhaps learn a bit about the local shipbuilding history. But for those who choose to dig deeper and follow the winding river that once floated fishing schooners to Massachusetts Bay, Essex offers a unique perspective on a vibrant northeast estuary and tidal marshland that remain largely undeveloped, raw, and beautiful. It was in Essex that I met up with Guyton Thorne, an avid kayak fisherman and representative for Old Town Canoe. So I ended up on Cape Ann in the Essex area because uh, my dad had lived here and I had a lot of college friends that lived around here. And, uh, we had spent about a decade out in California. We had a, a three and a half year old and a six months old and we wanted a place with a little more sense of community. And um, we loved Manchester by the sea and Essex and Cape Ann, the whole area. And we moved back here in 97. Probably the one thing about kayak fishing that separates it from shore and boat fishing is that um, to some degree you're, you're body you are a part of the equipment um, you you're acting like a drag by paddling the boat along um, you're out there and it's it's you really feel like you're in the elements with the fish a lot more than you're on, on the boat and it's uh, it's just a lot more of a, a real experience being out there when you when you hook into a big fish and you get the toe as we call it um, that's when the big the big smile comes out and you, you, it's addicting you've got to have more um, and, and as you can tell by how the sport's taken off, I think a lot of people are really, really getting into it. After launching our pedal drive yaks at Perkins Marine at low tide, we headed downriver as the mid-June sun bathed the surrounding marshland in warm light. The silence broken only by the roar of outboard engines belonging to early morning clamors heading off to work. As we made our way along the narrow, winding estuary, it was hard to believe that huge wooden schooners were once launched through the same waterway. Indeed, more schooners were built in Essex than any place in America. Over 400 of them between the late 1600s and early 1900s. Nowadays, the river is used mostly by commercial shell fishermen and recreational boaters, the former earning their living on the fertile mud flats that become accessible at low tide. For kayak anglers, the estuary is a paradise, especially in late spring when striped bass enter the river to feed amid the maze of channels that snake through the marshes. And that's where Guyton and I would begin our search for this celebrated game fish.
Yeah, I don't know. Let's see who's, who's got who would be. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tim Leadham, owner of Bosun's Marine. At Bosun's Marine, we share your passion is more than just a tagline. For over 33 years, Bosun's Marine has been bringing you the finest power boats in the industry. We are committed to bringing you unparalleled service year round, year after year. From offshore fishing and cruising yachts to small family oriented day boats, come visit us at one of our showrooms here in Mashpee on Cape Cod or at our new showroom in Peabody, just north of Boston. And be sure to check us out online at bosuns.com. This isn't your normal nine to five. Every day, there's a new puzzle to solve and no two days look the same. We get hands-on experience and continue a boating tradition passed down from generation to generation. This tradition has survived recessions and has been able to adapt and grow with new technology. This isn't your normal job and that's why we love it. The boating industry is full of opportunities. Find out more about our careers by visiting MassBoatingCareers.com. After pedaling our kayaks toward the mouth of the Essex River, Guyton and I began our search for stripers along Corn Island and the nearby flats as the tide poured in from the ocean. I started by casting a soft plastic sluggo along the banks, while Guyton trolled a small swimming plug behind his kayak which he often does to locate a concentration of fish. Nice. Yeah, you see, little guy. So you're just trolling that in the current. Yep. Uh, I'm sure we go back and forth here. Well, <laughs> this guy is more the size of a bait fish, but... <laughs> hey, we'll take it to start, right? Yeah. So how, how deep is it right here? Like About five feet. Four or five feet. A couple. I I tend to find I have better luck yeah. with the white over that. Yeah, but both, I like the white over it. Both of those should beautiful. Uh, hopefully. All right, now look. So so I think probably the best thing is to maybe just drift drift along this edge here and just work work flies and lures. That sounds An hour of prospecting revealed that the majority of bass were patrolling the edge of what's known as Great Bank, a big wedge of marsh just south of Chode Island where the movie The Crucible was filmed. Indeed, a cabin built for the film still stands on the island's eastern point. Spinning gear for this fishery is pretty basic. Guyton uses a light seven and a half foot rod paired with a light Okuma reel that holds roughly 200 yards of 17 pound test P-line monofilament, which he prefers over braided line. For lures, he likes to prospect with a small swimming plug, although the Essex fish will also hit poppers and soft plastics, particularly at dawn. Soft plastic swim shads are also effective when working channel edges and deep holes. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's amazing a fish of this size actually migrates 
from the Chesapeake or the Hudson. <laughs> oh, look at this one, huh? What a monster. Well, a striper is a striper. Let's see if I can get a bigger one now. I don't know if I could get a smaller one. You got one, Guyton? Yeah. Nice. That could be the money shot. <laughs> I wish it was about five times as big, but... Before hitting the road, run through a checklist to make sure your trailer is safe and secure. Make sure the trailer light harness is secure. Make sure your safety cables or chains are crossed and securely attached to the vehicle. Also check to see that the trailer brake safety lanyard is securely attached to the vehicle and that the safety pin is inserted. Always make sure that the trailer jack has been raised before you take off. Inspect the winch strap for signs of wear and tear, and make sure that the winch safety chain is in place. Check to make sure that your lights on your trailer work. Make sure that the safety straps are in place and that they're secure. Be sure to lower your antennas and your mast light so they don't hit any low-hanging power cables or tree branches. If you've been putting stuff on your boat, make sure you don't take off before stowing the boarding ladder. Oh, and one more thing. Make sure that everything inside the boat is tied down and secure. Don't be that guy driving down the highway with life jackets and cooler lids flying off behind your boat. Pursuit, built to a higher standard. Many try to replicate. Pursuit continues to innovate with cutting edge features and top notch technology. Offshore, center console, dual console, sport coupe, and the sport tender. We have boats from 23 to 38 feet, and once you own one, you will feel the difference. We know you have a choice, and you can put your trust in us to deliver a vessel that will take you where you want to go. Visit your factory authorized dealer today and experience the passion we have built into each and every one of our boats. Visit PursuitBoats.com and explore, experience, enjoy your life in pursuit. When you're moving a big offshore boat, it's all about thrust and trust. For thrust, nothing compares to the Yamaha purpose-built 5.3 liter V8 Power Pioneer. And for trust, Yamaha's new F350C model becomes the only outboard in its horsepower class to feature a five-year limited warranty. Never settle for less than complete confidence and control in the open water. That's Yamaha V8 Power. Get the best and forget the rest. As the tide continued to flood the Essex River covering the marsh grass, Guyton and I caught bass after bass on fly gear. Most were small, some incredibly so, but Guyton assured me there were larger fish lurking in these waters. gear that we're using? so yeah so this is just a nine weight um, I like to fish a clouser um, on a unweighted line out of the kayak or I, I'm sorry on a floating line out of the kayak mm -hmm. uh, the reason I like the floating line is um, there's a lot of debate over do you put a towel over the bottom to strip into it do you wear a stripping basket I like to strip over the side into the water and that way I don't have to worry about it getting foul because we have a lot of pedals and a lot of a lot of things a lot of grabby things well, in there that's true um, the 
white over chartreuse clousers. I, I use that almost exclusively in the river here. Mm -hmm. If not, I'll run an EP with similar. And, uh, um, and, is, this, and is that a two aught clouser or three aught? Uh, I, I believe this is a three here. Actually, okay. this is I didn't I didn't tie this one, but it looks like it's a three. Mm -hmm. And you know the, the fairly good sized dumbbell eyes. So that gets it down to about two or three feet below. Yep. And you know when we were fishing the deeper, that's when I went with my intermediate. Essex stripers come in all sizes, and we had taken our share of small fish before I had a strike from something more robust. Oh, good, good one there. There we go. Yep, that's a good fish. Much better fish here, Guyton. Yeah, I saw that hit. I sent him over your way. Oh, thank you. I, I much obliged. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, that little bank right there, though. Yeah, they love it. They, they seem to be holding right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is a better, a little bit better. I do have bit. anchors for the kayaks if we want to. Yeah, you know what? That might not be a bad idea if we find ourselves in a pile of fish like we have. Yeah. All right. Well, let me uh, let me do one more drift and. Um, Boy, they like the clouser minnow, don't they? Here. Yeah, they do. I'll tell you, man. He's towing me right into the marsh. Okay. Uh, he's almost he's pretty tired. He's up, up on the flat now. Oh man. Oh boy. Now he's got me under this ledge here. Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> Shoot. Come on out from there, buddy. He's got it underneath this peat marsh. There he goes, he's out now, he's out. Come on, buddy. Oh boy, the end game here is nerve wracking. <laughs> I'm telling you, this fish does not want to give up. Feisty little guys here. this time of year. Oh yeah, man. That's a... There we go. Come on, baby. Oh, right in the mouth, right in the corner of the mouth. Ah, there we go. Hey, that's a good fish. Whoa! <laughs> Beautifully done. Yeah, there's a keeper. Nice work. Well, I'll tell you, that that was a fight. That you thing said you took... a keeper, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. That thing took me right under the marsh bank. Oh, man. You know, I think that one that, that I got the flounder, I think he was trying to rub the hook off on the sand. Yeah, he was, I, I, I can't believe I landed that fish. Good job. Woo! <laughs> Oh, man. All right. <laughs> that's, that's the fish I wanted. That's the fish right there. That's the fish I wanted and the rod I wanted it on. <laughs> you got it. I guess the change in the tide hasn't made a difference. Well, not yet, at least. <laughs> I think they're lumbering around here, so. I, I yeah, I mean, we, we've caught. If you fish in very cold water, such as early in the season or late into the fall, or pretty much anywhere north of Boston, it's important to play it safe in case you capsize. Obviously, wear a life jacket to keep you afloat in case you fall in. It doesn't take long for hypothermia to set in once you enter water of 65 degrees or less, and a PFD will buy you some extra time if you become incapacitated. Use a sit-on-top kayak, which is easier to climb aboard than a sit-in kayak and does not pose the risk of swamping. Consider investing in a dry suit, which will keep you dry and comfortable in case the weather gets ugly or if you accidentally capsize.
Insulated waterproof gloves are also important to maintain the use of your fingers in cold conditions. Pack a sound signaling device such as a whistle or air horn to summon help, or better yet, a personal locator beacon, and keep it on your body. A strobe light is another good idea as it can help rescuers find you in the dark. Keep an anchor on board so you won't drift off to sea if you lose or break your paddle or other means of propulsion. Last but not least, let someone know where you plan to fish and when you plan to return, either by filing a detailed float plan or leaving a simple note on the dash of your vehicle. Hi, I'm Tim Leadham, owner of Bosun's Marine. At Bosun's Marine, we share your passion is more than just a tagline. For over 33 years, Bosun's Marine has been bringing you the finest power boats in the industry. We are committed to bringing you unparalleled service year round, year after year. From offshore fishing and cruising yachts to small family oriented day boats, come visit us at one of our showrooms here in Mashpee on Cape Cod or at our new showroom in Peabody, just north of Boston. And be sure to check us out online at bosuns.com. Explore, experience, and enjoy your life in pursuit. Pursuit Boats. For more than 60 years, we have built premium boats with unmatched quality, durability, and performance. Whether you want action, adventure, or relaxation, we have the boat for you. We offer a wide range of models from 23 to 38 feet. Offshore, center console, dual console, sport coupe, and the sport tender. No matter what your boating style is, Pursuit has what you need. Contact your local dealer today and explore, experience, and enjoy your life in Pursuit. For details, visit PursuitBoats.com. Energized by the knowledge that there were some large stripers inside the river, Guyton and I continued to fish the drop-off along the marsh banks with renewed enthusiasm. And although we never landed another big fish, the aggressive schoolies kept us busy until it was time to call hey, it Guyton. quits. Yeah, I guess the change in the tide hasn't made a difference. Well, not yet at least. <laughs> I think they're lumbering around here, so. I, I, yeah, I mean, we, we've caught them at slack high and low tide and everywhere in between, it seems. Oh, he got off. There we go, long distance release. people get on the river you know where, where, where are there some public access points if you're a kayaker well if you're a kayaker um, it, it's actually kind of tough um, there is the town ramp although there's limited parking so you have to go to the police station mm -hmm. uh, there's Urba which is a local business that has a guide service that actually runs trips and even some moonlight trips mm -hmm. uh, I mean can you can you park and launch there or do you have to guide you, you can them? park from at the public lot uh, or at the public ramp and launch and but then you have to drive your car over to the police station and walk okay. back mm -hmm. it's not too far it's you know maybe a couple hundred yards I guess right and then then uh, at Perkins Marine where we launched they charge twenty five dollars they to, charge twenty five and, and I do know that they're interested in, uh, they were talking to me about a, a fleet of rental kayaks. So I think they might be amenable to having people park there or launch there. But once again, parking is a challenge and they've got that for a lot of the boat trailer traffic. Yeah, gotcha. And uh, any, but, but beyond that, there's no public town landings or well, besides the one you just mentioned? There at Konomo Point there is, but that's residents only. Um, there is some non-resident parking. Um, it's a little tough to find, but you know, if you're adventuresome, I, I, I think people could figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> right, and kayakers tend to, well, kayakers and, tend to be Well, put it this way, anywhere where you're going to launch, you're going to have to 
drive to park your car and walk back to it. Yeah, is, is right. The so that's line. the whole that's the whole key, right? Yeah. So you can find a place to dump it in, but it's the parking that's mm -hmm. uh, a little tricky. Yeah. Great. So what if but what if someone wanted to come out and and, and fish with a guide? Uh, what, who are some good guides on the uh, Essex River? So uh, there is uh, Sea Fly Charters with Barry um, Richards, I believe is his last name, and then uh, Greasy Beaks with Elliot Jenkins mm -hmm. and. Really, I, I think you bring up a good point because the river does change so much. The fish are in certain places with the tides, although today they stayed for most yeah, of the Yeah, uh, they were very cooperative. They were cooperative for us, but it, it really does pay to uh, go out and employ one of those guides and um, sure. uh, get out here and, and they'll know the river and they'll get you home safely. Mm -hmm. I got into fishing, well, I, I originally, I suppose my first fishing outings were down in Bayhead, New Jersey on the Jersey Shore. Um, I fished a lot in the bay and then we well, used to watch my dad fish off the beach catching fluke and then we'd catch snapper blues, blowfish, those puffer fish, uh, which we used to feed to the cat. And uh, I got into it there and then I, it just, it stuck and uh, I had a good friend who uh, in elementary school, uh, uh, he and I both ended up living with single moms and they were very, very good to drive us all around everywhere. And we got into fishing and tying flies, which kept us out of trouble. Uh, and it was something, as I say, that just stuck. And uh, when I moved out west, I, I actually didn't do as much fishing as I'd like. And then when I moved back east in 97, I got back into it and into the salt. And that's where I really caught the bug for the stripers. And certainly this area around here is a great fishery. My name is Guyton Thorne. I am a resident of Cape Ann. I love the Essex area, and kayak fishing for me is my escape. I love to be out on the water in the kayak. Well, that's a wrap on another action-packed episode of New England Fishing. To learn more about fishing in this great part of the world, be sure to check out NewEnglandFishingTV.com. The site is filled with great articles, videos, gear and boat reviews, fishing news, and much more. And don't forget to order your copy of New England Fishing Magazine, a big, bold, glossy publication packed with informative how-to articles that will help you catch more and bigger fish all season long. Until next time, I'm Tom Richardson for New England Fishing. Thanks for watching.